What makes some people different from the rest of us? What makes someone unstoppable? What do they do that we don't do? What makes someone who's successful in what they do from the massive amounts of people who aren't? Whenever we see someone successful in a certain area of life, what that really means is that they have mastered the laws of cause and effect in that particular area. Someone who's an all-star basketball champion time and time again, it is pretty clear that they have mastered the cause to create the effect. Success isn't chance, success is mastery. So if you want to become successful at anything in life, an understanding of what it takes to master something is going to be critical. There is no other book that I found that discusses the process of mastery more perfectly than George Leonard's book, Mastery. George Leonard writes, We all aspire to mastery, but the path is always long and sometimes rocky, and it promises no quick and easy payoffs. So we look for other paths, each of which attracts a certain type of person. Mastery is available to anyone willing to get on the path and stay on it. To take the master's journey, you have to practice diligently and hone your skills to attain new levels of competence, willing to spend more of your time on the plateau, to keep practicing even when you seem to be getting nowhere. Practice for the sake of practice itself, loving the plateau. Meet the three enemies of mastery. The dabbler. Dabblers love the high that comes from doing new things, new jobs, new hobbies, new relationships. They'll approach each new thing with tons of enthusiasm. They tell all their friends, they post about it on social media, they buy all the gear. They love the shine of newness. They don't mind putting in the initial work to learn something new because they find joy in the initial spurts of progress that comes with learning the basics of a new skill. But the moment a dabbler hits a real plateau, especially if it causes them to lose some of the progress they have initially made, they quit. The obsessive, all they care about is results, results, and results, and fast. So when they hit plateaus, they are just as appalled as the dabbler, but rather than quitting, they double down. They ignore the fact that mastery takes sustained effort over time. They don't mind putting in the effort, but they've got a problem with putting in the time. They want to get their tennis stroke right and hit the ball perfectly from their very first lesson. And when they can't, they push even harder. Then they run out of gas and experience a sharp downward decline and quit. The hacker. The hacker is a bit different. Hackers begin reasonably well and make decent progress, but at a certain point, they stop caring. Once they've learned enough to feel comfortable with their situation, they stop trying to improve. Hackers are happy with the status quo. Sometimes they don't even realize they've put themselves in cruise control. They may think they're performing their job rather well, and so they have no idea why they're never promoted. Society teaches us that our lives consist of one climax after another. The media shows us the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. We're shown climatic moments, but mastery's true face is a relaxed and serene face. The human being is a learning animal, and to learn effectively, it must learn the six keys of mastery. Key number one, instruction. The best thing you can do is to arrange for first-rate instruction. When you learn too easily, you're tempted not to work hard. The best horse may be the worst horse, and the worst horse can be the best for if it perseveres. It will have learned whatever it is practicing all the way to the marrow of its bones. Key number two, practice. Practice is best conceived of as a noun, not as something as you do, but as something you have, something you are. Anything you practice on a regular basis as an integral part of your life, not in order to gain something else, but for its own sake. Masters love to practice. Key number three, surrender. Surrender to your teacher and to the demands of your discipline. Surrender your proficiency to a higher level of proficiency. The essence of boredom is in the obsessive search for novelty. Surrender means there are no experts, only learners. Key number four, intentionality. Every master is a master of vision. 
This is keeping your mind in the game or your eye on the prize. The idea here is to maintain a clear vision of where you're trying to go, even if you never get there. Key number five, the edge. Masters are dedicated to fundamentals. Masters challenge previous limits, take risks for higher performance, and even become obsessive in that pursuit. But before you even consider playing this edge, there must be many years of instruction, practice, surrender, and intentionality. And afterwards, more training, more time on the plateau. The never-ending path again. This is what keeps the students from complacency and keeps the student moving forward on the path. Avoiding pitfalls from the path. Backsliding is a universal experience. Everyone resists significant change. We tend to stay within narrow limits and snap back to our old ways when changed. This equilibrium is called homeostasis. You'll meet with homeostasis sooner or later. You might unknowingly sabotage your own best efforts or get resistance from others. If you really do want to stay on the path of mastery, here are five guidelines. Number one, be aware of homeostasis. Expect resistance and backlash. Don't give up at the first sign of trouble. Number two, negotiate with your resistance by using pain as a guide to performance. Keep pushing, but not without awareness to the warnings. Pushing your way through despite the warning signs increases the possibility of backsliding. Number three, develop a support system of other people who share the joys of the change you're making. Number four, regular practice. The path of mastery for its own sake, a stable base during the instability of change. Number five, dedicate to lifelong learning. The lifelong learner learns to deal with homeostasis because he is doing it all the time. It's easy to get on the path of mastery. The real challenge, however, lies in staying on it. It's possible that the reason you got on the path of mastery was to look good. You have to look foolish and take the pitfalls. If you're always thinking about appearances, you can never attain concentration. Maintain full awareness of each of your movements. Pay attention to the rest of your body. Go for efficiency, elegance, and grace in your motions. Stay wholly focused on the moment. Above all, don't hurry. Mastery is not about perfection, it's a process.